Hi guys, here's the video that goes over 5.5 day 2, uh, writing equations given a graph. So what we're doing is writing equations for sine and cosine when I give you uh, the graph of the function. There's three things we need to find using the graph. We need to find the amplitude because that's going to help us find A. A is the number that's in front of your trig function. We need to find the period because the period you can use to solve for B. So if you recall from when we were graphing, when we found the period, it was done by taking 2 pi divided by b. So when I have the period, I can use this to be able to solve for b. And b will be the number that's in front of x, or in this case in front of the parentheses. And then the other thing we need to pay attention to is the phase shift. And the phase shift will tell us what goes inside the parentheses with the x. So when we're starting with the graph, it's very helpful to label the x and the y axis based on your scale so that we know what each tick mark represents. So we can see that your window goes from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, and it's being scaled by pi over 2. So that makes this last tick mark, I don't know where that came from, this last tick mark being negative 2 pi. The one that's furthest to the right is positive 2 pi, and it's being scaled by pi over 2, which means the one that's in the middle is pi. Same thing over here in the middle would be negative pi. And then your y-axis is scaled by 1. This is going up to 4 and down to negative 4. So we can find the amplitude just by looking at how high or how low your graph goes. You can see that your amplitude is 3 because the highest it goes is positive 3 and the lowest it goes is negative 3. Now regardless of if we're writing this equation as sine or cosine, you're still going to have the same amplitude because we're going off of the same graph. The next thing that we need to find is the period. So to find the period, the period represents one full cycle, okay, a cycle that's, uh, that repeats. So you're either looking for a cycle of sine or you're looking for a cycle of cosine. So your cycle of sine looks like this, where it starts on your x-axis and then goes up, comes back down, and then lands back at zero. So that is one cycle of sine. So this distance from negative pi to positive pi represents the period. So your period for this case is 2 pi, because from negative pi to pi is 2 pi. So the period is 2 pi. Now again, we use the period to find b, so that means 2 pi equals 2 pi over b, so b equals 1. So that means the number in front of our x is going to be 1. Now the difference between sine and cosine graphically is the phase shift. Um, so what we want to do is we want to find the phase shift for sine, and then that'll help us write the equation for sine. And then we want to find the phase shift for cosine, and then that'll help us write the equation for cosine. So if you look back at the directions, what we're trying to find is the least positive number c. And c is what's used in the phase shift. What that means is, is that you are looking for the phase shift to the left of the origin. So sine normally starts at your x-axis and goes up. So you're trying to find the first portion of this graph on the, to the left of the origin that starts on the x-axis and goes up. So again, this is your cycle of sine. So normally, sine starts at the origin, but due to a phase shift, your graph is now starting over here. So that means your phase shift for sine is going to be negative pi. Because normally it starts at 0, 0, but now for this graph, our cycle of sine is starting right here at negative pi. So there's your phase shift for sine. Now that we have the phase shift for sine, we can go ahead and write the equation, for sine anyway. So I have y equals a, which is your amplitude, so that's 3, sine of b, which is just 1, so 1x, and then plus your phase shift, because it's, it's always the opposite when you put it back into the parentheses, um, so it's uh, x plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and erase that 1, not x but one, plus 1, x plus pi. So your equation for sine is 3 sine of x plus pi.
Now to write the cosine function, we need to find um, one cycle of cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and erase what I have over here so we can look for cosine. So normally cosine starts at, starts at a peak and then goes down. So here's one cycle of cosine. So on a regular sine graph without any phase shifts, that cosine, sorry, I meant cosine, I said sine. On a regular cosine graph, your graph starts on your positive y-axis. But due to a phase shift, our graph is now over there. So right here is negative pi over 2. So your phase shift for cosine is negative pi over 2. Okay, now that I have my phase shift for cosine, I can go ahead and write the equation for cosine. So I have y equals a, so my amplitude is still 3. Cosine, my b is still 1, so that's x, and then plus pi over 2, since it's always the opposite when you put it back into your trig function. And there's your equation for sine and cosine that represents this graph. All right, let's do another one. So this one's scaled a little bit differently. So we're used to seeing your x-axis being scaled in terms of pi's, but this just goes from negative 4 to 4. So let's go ahead and label it. So this last tick mark is negative 4. This one over here is positive 4. Everything in between is being scaled by 1. So this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then your y-axis goes from negative 6 to 6. So sometimes it's helpful to actually label all your tick marks, especially when you're trying to find the phase shift. Um, so your amplitude is how high or how low your graph goes. You can see that your graph goes up to 5, so your amplitude is 5. Now for the period, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the length of one full cycle. You can find uh, the length of a full cycle of sine, or you can find the length of a full cycle of cosine. I'm going to go ahead and find a full cycle of cosine, and the reason why I'm doing that is because all of my peaks are at nice values, so this peak is at negative 1, this peak is at positive 1. And then here is your one, uh, one cycle of cosine. So then this distance from negative 1 to 1 represents the period. So your period in this case is 2 units. So we use the period to solve for b. So I have 2 equals 2 pi over b. I can go ahead and cross multiply. So that gives me 2b equals 2 pi. So b equals pi. So your, p, your b is not a regular number. It's actually in terms of pi, and that's okay. Um, so don't get freaked out when you see something like that. Now for the phase shift. So since I have um, my cycle of cosine already drawn on the graph, I'm going to go ahead and write the equation for cosine first. So as we said before, cosine normally starts on your y-axis, but due to a phase shift, your graph is now over to the left. So your phase shift for cosine is at negative 1. So I have my phase shift, I have my b, and I have my amplitude, I can go ahead and write the equation. So I have y equals 5 cosine of b. Now since your b is something other than 1, you have to set it up in, the per in front of the parentheses um, with x and your phase shift, so that, x, that becomes x plus 1. Um, I do always want your equations to be fully simplified, so we can go ahead and distribute the pi into the parentheses. So pi times x is pi x pi times 1 is just pi. So your equation for cosine is 5 cosine of pi x plus pi. Now let's go ahead and find sine. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. That way we don't have too many colors on the graph because that can get confusing. Okay, so let's look for sine. So sine starts on your x-axis and then goes up. So I want to find my first cycle to the left of the origin that starts on your x-axis and goes up. So here is one full cycle of sine. Now normally, sine starts at the origin. It starts at 0, 0. But due to a phase shift, 
our sine is now starting right there and looking at your graph it's in between negative 1 and 2 so that means the phase shift for sine is negative 1.5. I'm actually going to write that as a fraction as negative 3 over 2. And then once I have the phase shift, I still have my a and b from the amplitude and the period, I can go ahead and write the equation. So I have y equals a, which is 5, sine of b, which is still pi, that has not changed, and then x with your phase shift, but that becomes plus 3 over 2, because it's always the opposite when you put it in the parentheses. And then simplifying... I can distribute the pi into the parentheses, so that gives me pi x plus 3 pi over 2. If you want to leave the 3 over 2 as a decimal, that is perfectly fine with me. That makes more sense to you. And that is your equation for sine and your equation for cosine for this particular graph. Alright, hope that helps.